Yo, all right, it's John with Lux here. I am installing the prototype kit for blacking out the slats in a Ram Laramie's Southwest Edition grill. Um, these are pretty cool. It's just going to be thin little black stripes here, and we're gonna put it right along the front face, and it gives you a very, very nice look. Uh, the top edge does remain chrome here, but you have to be standing about right here to be able to see that. From a lot of the angles in front of the truck and around the truck, this looks totally blacked out and it gives it just a little bit more luxury. It gives it that one little element that pops because now you have the, the contrast between the black and the chrome and it's already got the satin black Ram badge. So I'm just gonna come over here and move one of these stripes. The objective here is to not stretch this stripe. It's made to fit exactly, but I'll end up having to trim off just a little bit from one edge because inevitably we are gonna accidentally stretch it just a little bit but what I want to do is make sure that the adhesive is facing up so I can rest this side on my leg. And I'm going to start right at this side here. I'm right-handed. I'm sure if you were left-handed, it would actually be easier the other direction. And now my only objective is to very lightly hold the vinyl in line and press it down and try to get the slat in the center of the stripe. I'm not pulling at all. This is where I was saying you don't want to stretch the vinyl. So I'm trying to be very conscious of that. Put no force with my left hand, just enough to guide the, f the film. All right, guys, how's it going? I'm gonna wait for some people to get in here. But if you're just joining us, we're about to start this project. We have not yet. All you can see is I have taped up around the lights. Um, this is Dodge Ram, probably one of the most complicated tail lights out there. And uh, you know, I get a lot of questions about this light. Why don't we make a pre-cut for the full tail light? Well, you'll see why, because it's gonna take me a long, it's gonna take me quite a while to wrap this light compared to the other ones. Um, you can see we do have a kit on the website that tents this, this, and this part, and it gives you a great look. Um, but we want a full, complete look. And what we're gonna do is take dark smoke and do the main section of the light, then pull the tape off. Then we're gonna take and wrap just this bulge in KPMF matte black. So this bulge will be matte black. This will be a gloss outer section. We're gonna leave all these covered by the dark smoke and then put mid smoke right over the reverse light, which is gonna introduce just a little bit more visual interest. So let's try this. These are very hard. I don't do a ton of them. So you're gonna get to experience this real time with me. I know the technique that works the best for me here. Um, I just don't, have a ton of practice at it. So let's go. What I'm looking for initially is just that the film covers the light in all directions, which it does. We're just gonna tack it here and get this edge attached to the truck's paintwork right there. It can give us something to pull against. Now, lift this up and start to glass it out. Now you know that bulge is sticking out past the lights. It's gonna prove to be a problem for us. That's why I put multiple layers of tape right there. So I'm just gonna go right on top of that tape, give myself a relief, and get that out of the way. Hello, hello. All right, you can see. I'm going to pull as much stretch as I can. Now it's nice and warm in our shop, mid-70s. So I'm going to try to do this without using any heat until I need at the very end. Let's see if we can get that. We have nice glass all here. This is great. I'll go ahead and take care of some of that. Notice how I'm not going all the way to that bulge. So I'm going to end up trimming that. Go. Got a lot of weird tension right here. The vinyl's very upset. Barely gliding my line, knife across it. Okay. Get that out of the way. You got it? 
Okay. This is looking awesome. My objective here is to be able to trace this line out without having any weird wrinkles. So I'm really happy with what's going on here. We still see the vinyl is pretty pissed off up here. It's a little upset down here. So first thing I'm gonna do, just kind of pull that back, give it a little bit more tension and uh, see if I can't calm it down. And look, it's great. Not mad anymore. Nice and glassed out. Very happy there. Let's deal with this anger right here. Folding that up. Now remember, my main objective is to make sure that this line is nice and smooth. So while I'm holding it out, maybe I'll try to trace that line with my finger. Yeah, that's gonna work great. We got a little extra film right here we're gonna need to deal with. So pull it back to there, shift the material that direction and look, we get a nice clean edge. So now that we've got that, this is actually fantastic. Pull that off there, glass that, lock it down. And now we're in really, really good shape here. We're gonna take this, relieve a little bit more so we can get the film around the bulge now and start locking it down into that gap. So see that relief cut? Let me press that nice and firm. Need to do the same thing right up here so we can make it over this hump. Bam. You see the painter's tape allows the vinyl to slide on it. So I can use the sharp edge of the squeegee and start pushing it down into that crease. This is definitely a light where you can introduce a second shade uh, or a second type of material to the job. It's gonna give you that extra custom look and actually make the installation easier. There's no way you're gonna one piece this. It's not gonna happen. Um, the vinyl's gonna lift in this crease. I cannot imagine a way to install this as one uh, where it's gonna stay long term, but that's okay. No one's even gonna know. If you're really after that one shade, one piece, paint is gonna be your best friend on this light. But I think when you see that we put the matte black here and introduce that second shade here, it's gonna be a much more dynamic taillight than if you just painted it with smoke. Now I have seen some wild, wild custom painted taillights at SEMA and they're phenomenal. So there are definitely painters out there that can introduce different sheens or shades that will give you a really cool dynamic look also. But we're vinyl people. Locking it down here. Pull this up. I'm going for the bottom. I can feel right where the vinyl hits or where the plastic goes up. So the objective here is to get the vinyl down to that point and then we're gonna take the blade, run it across and uh, get rid of all the stuff that's gross in here. Let's see. We're getting pretty close to being able to cut. It's almost time. We've got some weird stuff going on right here. I wanna address. Since this is under the light, there's chances, the chances of someone sitting down here and looking up at this angle and seeing that I didn't do this perfect is very low. But I am down here. I can see it. I'm gonna try to get it as good as I can. There we go. Okay, so we're at a really good point right here. Um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and take out my blade. I just popped it right before I started this project, so I don't need to do that right now, but if you haven't, pop and get yourself a fresh blade. So you're cutting on plastic now and you are cutting against the truck, so you wanna be able to just glide the blade with no pressure so you don't mar the plastic. 
the areas that I think I'm gonna fail, I do those first. So this area, if I had a higher probability of failing than I do around the edges. That's why I didn't take care of the edges yet. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, one thing to note, this edge right here on the plastic on truck taillights is usually really sharp and sometimes will tear that film. There's like burrs of plastic on the lens. So earlier, Jose actually came by with some wet sandpaper and, uh, and kind of took those burrs down. That's gonna make sure that we don't tear the film. We've done that a couple times on that edge. It's no fun. Yeah. Oh. So that would be a high area of failure, but because he's taking care of it, I knew it wasn't, and so I don't really have to worry about that. Okay. Okay. I think this bottom is actually the most difficult outer edge of this light because of how deep it goes in where the bumper meets it, or the fender. So you wanna put a little heat there to soften it and kinda of hold the film up and then just drive it back with your squeegee. You don't wanna pull down on it. You'll end up putting quite a bit of tension there. There we go. That's all great. What you need? Oh, I was gonna ask for heat gun. Yeah. If you think it'll reach. Uh -huh. Come on, there you go. Thank you very much. Okay, all right, let's see. You're good there. So all of our outer edges are good. Just gonna lock this last one here towards the bed of the truck. Awesome. Now we are ready to trim the outside of the light. I'm not worrying about wrapping this around because no one's going to see that. And we have a really nice tension free edge here, anyways. So I don't want to introduce any more points of failure. Okay. Start cutting. See my blade is out very short. Only one click. and I'm angling it away from the body of the car into the gap. This taillight has a weird rubber seal. It's almost like a liquid, it's super odd. So don't have to worry about cutting that seal. But on some lights, you wanna make sure, especially that and around some windows if you're blacking out the chrome, you don't wanna cut any black rubber. It's no good. There we go. Yeah, absolutely, man. Not a problem, Innovative. Always glad to help and try. They're changing taillight designs so fast. There's so many crazy shapes and wings and things coming off of them. It's crazy. <laughs> so here I'm just trying to get a really clean, nice edge. Um, there's gonna be the most small amount of red plastic visible in between these two films, but because we've cut the light entering the, or we've cut, uh, how do I say this? <laughs> we've cut the light entering 
the lens down so much that that little bit of red is not gonna be visible unless you are right here on it looking for it. So that doesn't bother me one bit. I'd much rather have that tiny bit of visible red and no bubbles, no pullbacks, and a long-term install than try to hero that and then have that come back and just bubble up on us later. So. Looks like you've uh, learned your lesson on trying to catch a blade. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. As long as I'm sitting down, but I still have the instinct to try to kick it if I'm standing up, which is no good. <laughs> If y'all saw after that knife drop, I went ahead and popped a fresh blade. I don't know if it landed on the blade or not, but I'm not gonna risk that. And get this film applied down. I'm gonna cut here, because I know there's a reverse light. I hope I cut in the right spot. Okay, good. Whew. All right. I'm gonna open this up. I think the next time I do one of these lights, I'm actually gonna put a piece of painter's tape on that little reverse light right there, just so I can cut there if I need to. I don't wanna overstretch the film in this area. You gotta remember here, we are like, hey, hey it is your truck, Lisa. <laughs> It's gonna be badass when you get it back. So, you know, you gotta be careful here. I could keep heating this and pressing this in, but remember, film is okay if you stretch it up to 30%, but we're dealing with a very small gap here. So 30% of that gap is, is hardly noticeable. You don't know if you're gonna reach that point or not. So what I'm gonna do is trim on the side of the reverse light so I get a nice clean edge. I'm gonna try to follow that shape Corners are tricky. Woo. There we go. All right. So this video doesn't have a timer. Uh, what temperature do you post the vinyl to seal it all up? This vinyl is gonna be good at about 195, 200 degrees for the light wrap. The KPMF is, should be about the same. It's kind of the magic number. 200 is what I look for for most brands. Uh, if you have a steamer, steamers are great. It's gonna get you straight to the post heating temperature without the risk of burning the vinyl. Um, that is the final step. 